All right, today we're going to draw one of my very favorite things, which is nighttime skies. We're going to do it pretty much entirely with built-in textures that come with Krita. So nice, simple way to come up with something that looks pretty. First thing we're going to do is put in a background. I like to use dark shades of blue. It tends to give you a lot of control over what you're going to do next in terms of foreground or other parts of composition. Then once you have the background in, you're going to start putting in different layers. First I start with is pretty big, give a little bit of texture to the background. And the way we're going to be building this is doing different layers and stacking them on top of each other with mixed opacities, and that will give kind of the sense of depth that you like in a night sky. When you're putting this in, and when you're putting anything in, you want to be careful to keep it truly random. So randomness doesn't mean evenly spaced, it means you have some clusters where it's denser, some where it's less dense and you want to make sure that you have those clusters because elsewise it'll just look kind of weird and too samey. With that one in place, I'm going to switch over to this different brush, the splat brush. It's a little bit smaller and start adding a second layer on top. I'm going to keep it denser in the patches where I was going denser before, but also add in a little bit into the corners as well so that we don't have anything that's truly empty. If you think of a night sky, it's never actually fully empty, no matter where you look. You can always find a star if you look hard enough. With that, I'm just going to adjust the opacity on these. Since these are a background, we want to keep them a bit lighter. They're really there for just texture and to kind of give a sense of depth of field. Next thing I'm going to do is flip back to our first brush, but do it smaller. And this is going to start adding in some fine texture. This tends to look like stars clustered closely together. It's a good one to kind of follow in your denser patches with and slowly start getting some more interest in there. You want to keep things um, soft at the edge. So you'll see I've got my middle bit sketched in and then I'm going around the outside a bit lighter. That will keep the edges from looking too harsh and make it look like it's kind of fading off into the background. So we'll just do a few more of those. This is also a good brush to make it just a little bit bigger and then add in a tiny bit into some of our dead spaces as well. And just make sure that they've got a little bit of something going on back there, even though we don't want them to be nearly as dense as the main ones. So with that done, we're going to start getting into our smaller, finer pieces. Adjust the opacity a little bit, get the layers going. And we're going to go to this brush. So this one is makes quite fine dots, which starts getting into kind of looking like individual stars instead of the background textures we've been doing so far. So to start this, I'll put a whole bunch in all over the place using the bigger brush, and that'll kind of give a background star field vibe. And then once we've filled that in, we'll add in a second layer, and then we'll drop the brush size down. And that will place them much closer together. So that's what you do for filling in kind of the denser patches where you might have stars closer together. And so you get yourself a whole bunch more of them nice and tight. And same thing here, we'll add in a couple clusters randomly inside of the darker patches just to make them not look too, too dark. And that will start looking pretty nice. Um, then we just do a little bit of adjustments. For the opacity, there's not really a set value for where things should be to make it look good. That's something you kind of just play around with, tweak the different layers, find something that fits your vibe and makes you feel happy. So now we're going to start adding in some finishing touches. We'll do some stars using the star brush. These you want to use relatively sparingly. The more you use, the more kind of, well, excessive it will look, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's certainly a style, and it's a style that I enjoy sometimes. But you want to be aware of how you're using them and make sure that it really fits the aesthetic you're going for. I think today I'm feeling a little bit excessive, so we're going to do a lot of stars. So why not? If you've got pressure sensitivity, these will scale with the pressure sensitivity, but it can be a bit finicky. So sometimes you just kind of want to change up the brush size 
and get yourself a little more control. With these, you want to be careful not to place just singles. You want to do clusters as well, like that. Um, that will keep it from looking too forced and too lonely. Stars don't like to be alone. Stars like to have friends sometimes. So now, that is what I would call kind of the base sky. But there's a couple other things we can add on top as well to give it a bit more interest. The first of them, so we can give kind of a nebula effect using this crackle bush. So for nebulas, it's going to be two different layers. You want to start with one of the places you already have stars clustered, and then kind of add around it. Give yourself a nice layer. Um, similar to placing things earlier, you want to make sure that you kind of let the edges fade out as best you can. That'll keep it from looking too, too sharp. But we're also going to help that out by adding a second layer on top. So we'll drop down the opacity of this first guy, and then we'll do the second layer at a higher opacity. And that will give a sense of depth to our nebula. They always kind of look three-dimensional in real life, so that gives it a little bit of that sense of three-dimensionality. I just made that a little bit lighter. There we go. And you can add little bits and pieces here and there. Particular stars are interesting to you. The other thing you can do is add in a foreground. One of my favorites is to use this um, leaf texture brush. It's really nice and honestly works quite well for making just very quick trees. So you can fairly quickly just splatter in a little bit keep your tree line nice and uneven, and then you have some trees in the foreground. So if you want to take this and personalize it more, it's really easy to do things like flip out the colors, you can do rainbow nebula, which are always very fun, or rainbow stars, but that kind of gives you a basic sense of how all of these work, and which ones you can layer in to make something fun. So, have fun, play around, and happy drawing!